Now, what benchmark do you set for the truth? When you say, I really know you, what benchmark are you setting for the truth? Take an example of something you think you really know. What do you really know? From your experience and the repository of experiences is what? You see, I remember the example which I take often. Guruji at one time said in the satsang, uh, instead of all this, I should just give you some spiritual push-ups to do. Mm -hmm. yeah? And then he spelled it out. And what I remembered is like 23 or something. I don't remember what I remembered. But <laughs> I remembered that he said, I'll give you 23 spiritual push-ups to do every day. Then you go down, you do Om Namah Shivaya this way, and you go the next time you do Om Namah Shivaya that way, <laughs> and that is then you'll be happy because you have a practice to do. Mm -hmm. The satsang got over, and some of us were just standing outside the satsang hall, uh, and then we were saying, It was very nice. And what he said about I should just give you spiritual practice. So he said 23 push ups, spiritual push ups every day. And I said 23, and somebody else, oh, No, no, Father, he said 19. Nobody else no, I felt like it was 21. You see, if it just got over such time, <laughs> within five minutes, everything was starting to dissipate anyway. So it is so clear. Yeah, and how many times has it happened that you felt like you saw a movie in the movie or in your life? You, you saw a particular character say a particular dialogue. You, and then you look back and say, no, oh, they're saying something completely different. But you had the visual of it as if it actually happened. So the memory is very much part of the mind. It creates very conveniently this uh, idea of knowing or individuality, you know, but, uh, but there's no reliance on it. So if this, even this experience, which I value more than just, just a concept, you know, in the sense that you can create this beautiful example from Plato, where he said, he was trying to distinguish between conceptual knowing and a true or perceptual knowing. So he said, suppose you had a blindfold on and somebody you trust came and told you that be careful, 20 feet away there is a cliff, you will fall. So you know that 20 feet away there is a cliff, but just like a mental knowing. So it came from a credible source. So you feel like, ah, I know. Then somebody you trust even more. Really? Comes and says, no, no, look, 20 feet, be careful, it's 10 feet away. Really? Really? Ah, now you know it is 10 feet away. So both concepts, and yet it is possible to debate them to come up with a more credible sort of reasoning and change that. Really? Then you remove the blindfold and you see two feet away there was a cliff. That's what these guys doing. You know? So you know, now you really know. But even with perception, you see? There are so many misperceptions. You can see mirages, Vidyam, and these are the common ones. But so many examples which Shankara, Adi Shankara himself took, and said you mistake a pillar to be a man, you mistake a rope to be a snake, you mistake uh, uh, this oyster sitting there, and if it's open, then you can feel like it's a piece of silver. You see, in the mother of pearl. So, so all these perceptions and misperceptions are there. You could hear something and all of us could disagree on what was heard. So not just visual but also audible. So even this is not a reliable way to truly know. So concepts you cannot count on, perceptions you cannot count on. And that brings us back to the same pointing from the sages which is count on that which is the unchanging. Count on that which is unchanging. I will say easy for them to say. <laughs> How do I find this unchanging? Where do I find unchanging? Which side do I have to look to find the unchanging one if there is such a thing? This side, anything? On this side of the eyes, anything? 
Mm -hmm. Everything changing. Unreliable, can't really say for sure anything. Mm -hmm. Now, this side of the eyes, now you might say there's a lot of things which are changing even there. Imagination, memory, emotion, sensation, pain, pleasure. It can seem like these are inside. Mm -hmm. Now let's go even deeper. So even these are perceptions. Okay. What witnesses all of this? Inner perception, so-called inner perception, outer perception. What witnesses all of this? Here is where you have to love the I don't know. Because to the mind, it's extremely frustrating. Here you will not find a thing to see. Because you will see that even that is seen. Okay. So on one side of the scene is all these objects. What is on the other side? Everything is seen. Okay. And everything that is seen is changing. And therefore, we cannot really know it. We cannot rely on it. Who is the seer? Okay, let's ask it that way. Who is the seer? Who does the seeing belong to? The word seer, which also means sage in India, the word seer also comes from this. The one who sees the truth. The truth is unchanging. If I could encourage a sort of an inner attitude to this exploration, then I would say enjoy it. Enjoy it, love it. Don't be so quick to say no, nothing, but as a big void over there. You see, or something like that. This is the void. Don't rush to a conclusion. Enjoy this. Because your claim will not mean anything. I am not bothered at all by any claim or any answer that you give. I am a strange sort of teacher. <laughs> I don't want you to give the right answer. But those who can start to enjoy this exploration, what's on that side of my scene? It's like, I woke up this morning. The sense I am was there. Then when the sense I am is there, I'm saying it in temporal terms, but time itself comes after I am. Mm -hmm. But the sense I am was there. And then I saw, okay, I'm not there, okay, my body is there, his family is there, his room is there. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you see, see all this. And all this is true for you. Mm -hmm. Now, all of this is perceived by my being. I am is seeing all of this. I am seeing all of this. I am seeing all of this. So my being seems to work so much in resonance with my attention that it seems to create this phenomenal appearance or reality, whatever you call it. But what is on that side of I am? What is the I which now am? You've looked for the truth for a long time on that side. No? Everything I am this, I am that, I am in this house, I am like this, I am not like this. You see? And you seen that today we looked and saw that all of this so called truth just falls apart and push comes to shove. You see? So, how are we try looking on that side? Can this, that sees all of this? Itself be seen. My Guruji's favorite question can the perceiver be perceived?
this brings you to a deeper meaning, which is not conceptual, it is not perceptual. What are you seeing there? <coughs> Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharishi said, what is the point of knowing anything if I don't know myself? And then he said, once I know myself, then I know everything. So, he's encouraging you, he's imploring you to look deeper at your own self, rather than trying to find something in object or in concept. at the center of all of this.